Pictures of an RTX 30 series graphics card were just teased by Nvidia and the memory specifications were just confirmed for both the RTX 3080 and RTX 3090. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So in the video that was released by Nvidia, there were three statements made regarding the power draw of these cards, and to me, they all signify that yes, the power draw is going to increase, so let's go over them. The first statement I found interesting was, quote, one of the things we'd also like to do is be able to generate more performance by getting more power into the GPU. Later on in the video, they also state, quote, the thermal aspect of the design is fully embraced. So clearly here, thermals is gonna be a big issue for these cards. And then finally, the third thing that tipped me off about a power increase was when they said, one of the components that we reduced the size significantly was the power connector. And we designed a new connector which is smaller than the PCI Express connector, but actually end up carrying more power. So when we take all three of these statements in the video together, well, I think it's pointing towards the fact that yes, the TDP of these cards is definitely gonna go up. I mean, this is gonna be one big, thick, power hungry boy. And in fact, a while ago, there was a leak that Igor had over on his website where he stated that the RTX 3080 would have a TDP of 320 watts and the RTX 3090 would have a TDP of 350 watts. And of course, at the time, a lot of people and myself included were like, what, really? I'm not sure if that's actually gonna be the case. I mean, Nvidia's never done this before, but you know, honestly, this time around, I think they're getting a little bit scared of AMD. AMD's RDNA 2 architecture looks really, really impressive and I think NVIDIA, they probably ended up going with like the Samsung 8 nanometer node, which isn't gonna be quite as efficient as the node that AMD is gonna produce their RDNA 2 GPUs on over at TSMC. And so I think being at that big disadvantage in terms of node, and then AMD also having big performance gains with the different things that they've done to their RDNA 1 architecture to make it better, and get it into RDNA 2, I think this is really scared NVIDIA, and so they're really pushing their cards to the limit, and in order to do so, they had to make bigger coolers, they had to make a bigger power draw, and in order to do that in a smaller package, at least on the PCB, well, that meant that they had to make some changes, and one of those changes for a reference design from them was to make the PCIe connector a little bit smaller. So, it looks like in this image that they have here, they state that there's a compact 12-pin connector compatible with PCIe 8-pin cables using an included adapter. So you can expect this card to definitely draw over 300 watts because if you take two 8-pin connectors, well, that's 300 watts uh, technically on its own. And in fact, they can often deliver even more than that. And you're not accounting for the PCIe power that comes through that from the motherboard. And from there, you can get an additional 75 watts. So you could give at least 375 watts from two 8-pins and a PCIe connector. So if you combine those two 8-pins into a single 12-pin, and it's the same size as to, of one 8-pin about, well, then you can get a whole lot more power through in a smaller package. And that's gonna allow them to make this design where they showed in the video, where it's gonna have air coming in through the bottom, it's gonna kinda circulate through the card, it's gonna be unimpeded at the end of the card, there's gonna be no PCB above that final fan there, and it's gonna all it get exhausted out of the card, and hopefully, if your case is set up correctly, the exhaust fan on your case will then take all that hot air and get it out. And honestly, this is a huge improvement in terms of thermals when you compare it to their current design on the RTX 20 series. I would expect that this new design is going to be very, very competent. In fact, I believe this is probably why most of these third-party cards are going to be available around the same time. Maybe it'll be a week or two after the Founders Edition of these cards launch, you will be able to get third-party designs because I don't think NVIDIA is afraid of the third-party cards this time. I think their Founders Edition design is actually going to be so good that it's going to rival many of the third-party designs. And in fact, NVIDIA will probably take the best GPUs for themselves again. So it might be that this time around, those Founders Edition cards from NVIDIA are going to be some of the best cards you can buy. I mean, it might be where the only cards that beat the Founders Edition are ones that are like, like definitely triple slot, three eight pin power connectors, you, they're chugging like 400 watts of power. That's how I'm guessing things are gonna go down because 
again, if NVIDIA takes the best dies for themselves and they have just an awesome cooler, there's no reason for them to be afraid and push back the AIB partner models. And another reason why I believe those AIB partner models, the third party cards will be available shortly after the Founders Edition cards is we've been seeing all sorts of leaks. I mean, they've been all over the internet for quite a while now. But you know, to have such a massive GPU like the 3090 with a massive die needing a massive cooler and sucking a massive amount of power, well, that massive die is going to need a bunch of memory bandwidth. And that brings me to the next thing I want to mention here. And recently over at videocards.com, they had a story that they posted where they confirmed the 3090 and 3080 memory specifications. So over on video cards, they had this to say, quote, we have just confirmed the memory specifications for the upcoming Ampere GeForce graphics cards. So far, only the RTX 3090 and RTX 3080 have been confirmed. The information has been confirmed through our sources at AIBs. It's based on the product code names that we received. They then go on to say, quote, First of all, there is no RTX 3080 Ti, at least not yet. NVIDIA is really launching the RTX 3090 instead. This graphics card will feature 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory, the same capacity as the current generation Titan RTX. The GeForce RTX 3080 has been confirmed with 10 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. So with that information, the confirmed 24 gigabytes on the RTX 3090, now I'm starting to think again that maybe the 3090 really is the Titan replacement, or at least maybe there's not a Titan yet and they're holding one and they don't have plans to release it unless AMD wins. I'm not 100% sure here, but with 24 gigabytes, what are you going to do with a Titan 48 gigabytes? I mean, I guess they could do that, but you know, if that is the case, $1,400 for essentially a Titan replacement is a much better deal than $2,500. Still way, way too much money if you're going to buy it for a gaming graphics card. But if you're someone who needs it to do some sort of uh, scientific workflow or there's some sort of 3D animation that this card does that the other cards don't, I guess this is a better deal than it was last time around. And, you know, it's apparently going to have a 384-bit bus, which, of course, a 384-bit bus with 21 gigabits per second GDDR6X is going to give you 1,008 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. And that is a crazy increase. And honestly, I don't even see any reason why you would need that much bandwidth increase. But hey, if you want to give us more NVIDIA, I'm not going to complain. And now looking over at the RTX 3080, which apparently is going to have 10 gigabytes of VRAM, that's going to be on a 320-bit bus. And if it's at 19 gigabits per second GDDR6X, well, then you're going to get 760 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, much higher than the current RTX 2080 Ti. So I would expect this 3080 to be significantly faster, probably in the range of 15 to 20-ish percent faster than the current 2080 Ti. And uh, unfortunately, you know, 10 gigabytes of VRAM is very disappointing because they're probably gonna charge around $800 for this graphics card. And so that level of money for only 10 gigabytes of VRAM, again, disappointing, but hey, huge improvement from eight gigabytes of VRAM. I mean, that was an absolute joke when they turned around and sold us a mid-range graphics card, 256-bit bus RTX 2080 with only eight gigabytes of VRAM. That was an absolute joke. So much better to have 10 gigabytes, but still would have liked to see at least 12 gigabytes of VRAM on their 80 class this time around. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about this teaser video? And is your power supply gonna be able to handle these graphics cards? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you wanna see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.